I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Blue Midwest Mysteries. We got the OG crew here today. It's me, Percy number six. And me, Mr. MPS 2002. Who knows what intro music we're going to be using for this episode, because I sure don't. But we don't I because mean, maybe apparently that's, maybe that's what we do now because apparently percy time. number six didn't like the big time rush theme song that yeah, i yeah i'm that not I a big for the last... time rush no you don't like yeah them? i don't know about that they're just a bu- mean, they're just not... a group of boys you know what's wrong I with mean, a group of boys they're, they're okay but for our blue midwest mysteries theme song i don't know about that do you have any su- actually no i'm not going to listen to your suggestions we use your uh your suggestion for the entire last year uh, the undisputed era the entire last year we did like five episodes yeah by the way i i did some some counting we uploaded oh five epi- <laughs> episodes oh, in really? 2021 exactly five Great question did we do that in one month in 2020 yes Yes, certainly. Certainly we did. Okay. But that's okay. So, uh, we got we got to pick it up this year. Is what we're I'm we're busy boys. So we're all bit oh, yeah. we're busy boys and so mm-hmm. sometimes you don't have time to sit around and record a bullshit podcast. That's you know, true. You life, know? life gets in the way sometimes. You know? You know? Well, you know, last week we I was I was joined by the ever so gracious community president lnr flying scotsman um we were uh in a in a recording studio uh that was very elaborately set up to make it seem like we were outside so all those plane noises and and sounds of birds that you heard in the background of that episode was actually all um movie magic but i thought birds aren't real man birds aren't real that's what i'm saying it's movie magic Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. We created the fake birds, uh, bird songs. You know. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, what do you what do you think of the of the bird songs? Well, you know, the birds were interesting, but what interested me in even more than that was uh, apparently. President Roberto was going to make me the ambassador to Sodor, and then you made him change his mind. Uh huh. Yep. One hundred percent. So, so why why did you do that? Um, because I wanted power. That's about the skinny of it. <laughs> but, so, so, but, but that that was my power, and as you know, I've had a rough year. I lost my TWRC championship. Now Roberto's the TWRC champion. And you take away my chance to be ambassador? I don't know how I feel about this. <clears throat> well, you know, life <clears throat> life's not easy for for anyone, really. So yeah, you know, it's it's okay. Life's life's tough for for everyone out there. Everyone's got problems, ba- baby boy. And you know, um, I got ninety nine problems, and Sodor ain't one. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Well, I, I'm I'm just. Not upset. I'm disappointed. Well, hey, listen, listen, hey, hey, listen to me. We can we could still run someone against Roberto for this next election. It's uh, happening in November, so soon, only a couple months away. And by that, I mean like, uh, I don't remember how many uh, ten months away. But it's it's coming. That will uh, that time will fly by. Who knows how many people okay. will be exposed to be pedophiles in that time? But, but here's the problem, right? 2019, no, 2020, we put you on the line. You couldn't get the job done. 2021. I mean, you didn't have to say I dropped like out that. of the race. <laughs> you didn't have to I, say You like didn't that. get the job done. You didn't have to and say And then like I that. dropped out of the race. Well, I mean, it's true, didn't you? You didn't get the job done. I wasn't given the chance to get the job done properly. I would, some, I think, some would say. I gave an unbiased moderation of your debate, and you just couldn't convince the fans, the audience, the community. Okay. Well. Well. Okay. So, well. So listen. How about this? We we go we go find a milk tanker media, dig him up out of whatever hole he's buried in, run a couple volts of electricity through his body, bring him back to life, and we run him next year. How's that, or this year? How does that sound? 
I mean, that sounds good, but that also sounds like a robot. Oh, no, I mean, it's like a Frankenstein-type situation, because he's dead. Oh. You didn't hear about that? You didn't hear about that? He died. He's dead. Terrible, terrible accident that I just don't have time to get into right now. That's really disappointing. He was a good guy. He he came on our show. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. He did. And I used to call him all the time during the Grease and Oil podcast. Yeah. You did that on your old podcast. You know, you know, talking about your old podcast, we lasted longer than them. That's true. That's true. But maybe not for long. Just kidding. Or am I? Just kidding. Um, Although, you know, another thing we have to bring up, our show, you know, you know what our show is called, right? Heard of it. Yeah. Can you say the name of our show? Uh, Blue Midwest uh, and Oil. (laughs) No, no. See, here's the problem. Midwest. Yeah. Why was our last episode? Why did you take the mid out of the West for our last episode? Because that's where I was. It just wouldn't have uh, been really fair, I feel, to do an episode entitled Blue or do a show entitled Blue Midwest Mysteries and not be in the Midwest. I felt like I would just be d- deceiving our lovely viewers. See, you know, we had a nice 30 episode streak of doing every episode in the Midwest. And then I, I think this President Roberto's got a bad influence on you, Matt. Listen, you know, he's not making me hang out with him or anything like that. We're just a couple of boys building a layout together. Eating a lot and then, eating a lot of candy together, then, ruining our teeth in general. Let's also think he he made you use your Thomas Wooden Railway items so he could put a video out on his channel just so he could be in the community video this year. Well, he told me that, you know, it was he was doing it for exposure because he, you know, he wanted me as a as a as a an underling of his to get sort of more attention based on his uh based on his channel, his very successful channel cuz he's the president after all. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I I mean, I I can hear what you're saying, but he sounds like he's this does not sound like a healthy relationship, Matt. Hmm, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. This is something I'll have so to what I, think on. But he, he said he would make me so powerful. Well, uh, what I think you got to do, so so you're not in this problem anymore, you've got to drop your title of ambassador and give it to me. And then and then you won't have to worry about it anymore. No, I don't think I'm going to do that, actually. Uh, I, I, okay, uh, I, I, let me take it back. I, you're going to have to do that. No, well, here's the thing, right? Is I got a lot of I got a lot of complicated dealings going on. I'm setting up some sports teams for Sodor. I don't know if you heard or not, but I'm setting up a Sodor sports team called the Sodor Minnesota Jets, and we're in the middle of some very intense negotiations right now. And if I uh, vacate the position or um or I'm, I'm forced out of the position before this deal goes through, then that sports team is never gonna happen. And then Sir Tom Hat's going to find me. And he's going to tie me up with chains and cinder blocks. And he's going to drop me out of Bolstrode in the middle of the night in the, in the harbor. So uh, unless you want me chained to a bunch of cinder blocks at the bottom of the Sodor Harbor, then I don't think we should do that right now. Well, I think that's a risk I'm willing to take, Matt, because I'm, I'm just confident in my, my position as ambassador to Sodor. Yeah, but I think Roberto likes me more than you. So, Sorry. Sorry, I'm just saying. I think he, I think he likes me more than you, and so I think he'll let me keep my position. Sorry, maybe I can, maybe I can reach out to him and see if he can open up a position for you. Maybe you can be my my assistant or something. Well, I I was thinking that if if I'm gonna get a position, maybe like, you know, Secretary of State in his cabinet. That that would be a good one for me. Or you could be my janitor. Uh, don't you have like robot MPS for that? He is like, he uh, is uh in the basement right now. He came after me with a knife the other night. I had to bolt the door shut. Ooh, he's that, I'm glad you're okay. He's still down there with wooden railway only. That's where you that's wrote a wooden railway only down there. Yeah, that's where we filmed that clip for uh for for your for your crossover. for your crossover, and he's still down there. That was that was in September. You left him down there. Yep. There's plenty oh, of man. plenty of rats to keep him company. We saw a ferret down there one time. That's a true story. There's a ferret in the basement of my house one time. 
Yeah. Is, is he okay down there? I ha- I haven't heard from him in a while. I, you know, for a while he would you know bang on the door and he'd you know scream like help help you know that kind of stuff. But I haven't heard that you know in a in a while, several months. So I think he I think he's sort of settled in down there. You know, I think he's really sort of like he he's like accepted that he's you know that you can't always make a house into a home but that's okay because it's his home anyways <laughs> if you know what i'm saying well, if i remember our crossover because i was one half of it you were the other half mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, he he looked he looked he looked lonely down there after he left them so I, I think you should probably visit him down there and make sure he's still you know alive well that's why i put the robot down there i hang out with him and chase him with a knife you know keep his keep his stamina up keep his energy up you mean the robot that almost took over the community in 2020? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, okay, so... Well, I, I think you gotta do something about that, Matt. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get, I'll set, send a screwdriver down there. One screwdriver. And I'll tell Ro, if you can fix this shitty robot, then I'll let you out of this basement. But he has to fix it first. That way, it's a win for me, because I get my robot fixed... That's the one for him because he gets to finally leave my basement and see his family again. Okay, we can try that. We'll try that. Yeah, I think so. I think I actually okay. I think I think I might be, you know, get it, uh, uh, being a little bit too lenient on him there. Maybe he has to fix my robot and also give me six million dollars, and then I'll let him out of my basement. You know what? I'll, I'll upgrade it. He has to give you six million dollars too. Okay. I, okay. Then that's a fair deal. That's a fair deal. Six okay. million for each of us. Well, I'll go like plus that. plus a fixed robot for me. I'll go down there and I'll yeah. tell him this after the episode. I'll you know I'll even throw throw a bag of bag of raw meat at him just to motivate him if he seems hungry. Yeah, that, that gives him some food. That'll last him for a little. Well, bit. Uh, what order do you put your socks and underwear on in the morning? I was thinking about well, this I... thinking about this the other day, and uh, I decided I wanted to ask you because we have a podcast and we talk to each other. <laughs> That's true. We do talk to each other, and we have a podcast. For me, it's underwear, socks, pants, shirt. Interesting that that you even think it through all the way. I usually am an underwear first type of boy, unless, unless, unless it's like really freezing cold, because I am like a little bitch when my feet get cold. So if it's like really, really cold, like it hasn't been lately, uh, fuzzy socks right away. Then, uh, than everything else. It, for, usually, yeah, at one time? Usually, yeah, everything else I put on in one fluid movement. Okay. Uh, no, usually I'm underwear, then socks, and then... And then shirt, and then pants. Usually uh, pants is the last thing I put on because I like to tuck in my shirt. And it's like, is extra effort to tuck in your shirt if you... Uh, already have your pants on you gotta like shove it in there whereas if you already have your shirt on you can just pull your pants up around the shirt like around the bottom of the shirt I can see like if I you know have to tuck in my shirt or something I think it makes a lot of sense to put on the shirt last because it's like okay got the pants already to go now you're just putting the shirt in the position then bang you close the pants put the belt on you're good to go. You're good to start your day. Exactly. It saves you like two seconds of time. And, you know, uh, in reality, two seconds of time doesn't seem like much. But actually, it's a very important amount of time. Two seconds could be, could be the difference between life or death. Yeah, it can be. You were right. Um. So, basically, uh, let us know in the comments, guys, if you put on your socks first or underwear or if you don't wear underwear. Do you ever go through a phase of not wearing underwear? I can honestly say I've not done that. I did when I was in middle school, but only because I only own like th- uh, three pairs of underwear that I, that were comfortable. And so I would just sometimes didn't wear underwear. And I, I, I was lucky that no one at school pulled down my pants. Yeah, that's you were taking a pretty high risk there, Matt. Especially because I wore sweatpants all the time. It would have been so easy for someone to just fucking pull my pants down. Yeah, that would have. Uh, you got away. Do you do you ever um you ever get your pants <laughs> pulled down? Uh, again, I can honestly say I do not. One time, this is a true story. One time at my school, um, my friends and I were sitting in the lunchroom, and my school was like pretty um well I mean it was like a melting pot of like a lot of different 
people of a lot of different cultures and stuff like that all went to my school. And so there's a lot of clashing between uh, ignorant white people or just ignorant people in general. Just a lot of clashes between ignorant people and other people who also were arguably ignorant. Um, and so there's a lot of fights at my school. It was like at least like three fights a week. It was just a common thing. But one day my friends and I were hanging out at lunch and all of a sudden a fight broke. Someone yelled fight and we were like, oh boy, here we go. And we all like turned around to look at it. And we expected it to be like these like, you know, big like burly kids fighting or whatever. But it was these two kids who were sitting at like the end of this table and they were playing Magic the Gathering. And this one kid got so fucking mad at the other kid that he got up, bro, and he just started like swinging at this kid. And it was like very clumsy, like obviously this kid has never punched someone in his life. But it was just like the raw fury of like uh like someone who's been bullied their whole life and i was like holy shit and he was just like giving this kid the business and then out of nowhere this ancient english teacher of my school he must have been like 300 years old um came running out of nowhere and fucking tackled the kid that was beating up the other kid to the ground and everyone's like in shock at what as this happens and then the kid that got tackled to the ground stood up and his fucking pants and underwear fell down. And, and, and he mooned the entire fucking lunchroom. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know what to say. My friends and I were like speechless after that happened. Normally we'd have like a funny comment to say, but we we did not have shit to say after that. It was just like, wow, I guess that happened. <laughs> yep. so, so question. Yeah. You, you, in one of our previous podcasts, I think Milk Tanker Media said he played that game, and and he lived close to you when you were in school. So was he involved in that fight? In in the Magic the Gathering fight, yes, he was the kid that showed his ass, his entire asshole to my whole high school cafeteria. No, um, classic Milk Tanker Media. Uh, yeah, he, and it was weird because he didn't even go to my school. He just came to my school one day and started beating the shit out of some kid, and then showed everyone his asshole and left. Wow. <laughs> um, no, that would have been a lot funnier that way. But that um, no, uh, Milk Tanker Media did not, in fact, show his class. I've never seen Milk Tanker Media's asshole. Well, that's good. Uh, 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 so, uh, 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 airplanes, right? I was on an airplane. I, I was flying back yeah. home from... Uh, from California where I was hanging out with Roberto and you know because we're still in cor- still coronavirus outside and um mm-hmm. and so th- th- everyone has to wear masks in airports it's just like it's just like they just like lay down the rule and because and because it's in an airport everyone listens to it because airports are the one place that you cannot absolutely cannot fuck around at all yeah. they will not hesitate to fucking put you in handcuffs and keep you in a small room for a very long time if you fuck around yep. at an airport um but i do think it's funny because when we get onto the flight you know the flight takes off the flight attendants come fucking up and down the rows like twice and they're like hey you know just a reminder uh federal law requires that you wear your mask on this air- airplane at all times and i'm like okay yeah great whatever but then they come around with the fucking beverage cart and like the like the little bag of like terrible fucking cookies that they always give you and then everyone takes their mask off at once at the same time to (laughs) fucking eat it and it's like guys what's even the fucking point here like like truly what's the point what what's what's going on here because everyone Mm -hmm. does everyone fucking takes off their mask at the same time and i just I just didn't want to deal with that because I, uh, I, you know, getting coronavirus would be inconvenient for me. Uh, shall we, shall we say that? So I just kept my mask on the entire time, um, while I was in the airport and on the plane and it kind of was miserable, but also it was fine because I don't have coronavirus. So whatever. <laughs> I've never, I've somehow never gotten coronavirus still. Have you? Hey, me too. I've not got COVID. Gang. 
That's Maybe we're like the COVID free podcast. Ooh, that's pretty good. I wouldn't name this episode that, but it would get demonetized. And as everyone knows, we make tons of money off of these episodes. Yeah. These episodes get like get like 230 viewers. That's we're rolling in the big bucks. Not even Fred was making that much. See, and, and, and that's why that's why I was upset about last episode. You throw in big time rush and copyright. Uh, YouTube overlords weren't happy about that. Okay, okay. So what what song should we use this time then? Huh? If you're any, just about anything but that. Any song. Any song just, other than. I said, I said just about. Okay. What if I what if I used uh, oh I just I just hit the microphone. I just hit it again. Uh what if I used this song? Yeah, what'd you think of that song? I, I, I didn't hear that song. Okay, well what do you what do you think about this song? Okay, how about that how, how about that song? You didn't hear that song. Oh, but I, didn't hear but I played it so loud. Okay, well, you, you'll for sure like this next song. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Yeah? Pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Yeah, that, that was great. That man. last one was is a good one, for sure. Okay, great. Yep. Okay, yep. good. Well, yep. gl- glad we got that one uh, <clears throat> figured out and decided. Um... Uh, I just saw someone, I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed right now uh, while we're recording this, and I just saw that someone posted a picture of a naked minion. So I'm going to uh, close out of Instagram and turn off my phone, because I don't want to see that. You might want to throw your phone away, too. Yeah, I think my phone might have to go into the garbage. Do you... Uh, give, it, give, give it to Ro. He, he's... Give it to Ro like down to my basement. Down. Yeah, maybe he can yeah. use, use pieces from it to help fix that fucking robot. Um, yeah. do you, you know, you, you've lived a couple places, a couple different cities in your, over the course of your life, right? I have. Have you ever had in anywhere that you have lived a local maniac? Like someone who's, who's like around and who like people know about and he's just, or he or she, I don't want him or they, who just screams, who just like is a lunatic and just and just like walks around screaming, and people just like stay out of the way. Because I feel like a lot of uh, towns have those. I, I honestly can't think of one, unfortunately. Because our my city Milwaukee that I live in. I mean, there's a more than one um, maniac that lives in Milwaukee. Let me tell you that. But the there is a uh, one of our most local local maniac maniacs um is uh, he is, wakes up at is the earliest hours of the morning that i've ever been seen and he just walks down my street that i live on and screams screams random random things and mostly he directs the screaming at the apartment building across the street from my house and it's just like it's just like incomprehensible. Like, hey, fuck you. Hey, hey, fuck, well, fuck you. It's just like the most, just incomprehensible mm-hmm. stuff. And it and to, for context, my room is in the back of the house, like the far, far back of the house. I don't hear shit from my room, and I still hear this fucking crazy man yelling at six in the morning, yelling at doors. In the apartment building, J- yelling, oh. yelling at boxes, and so you've never, you've never had to deal with a local lunatic. Nah, but I remember like five years ago when there were clowns everywhere. We had clowns. Fuck that, dude. That fucking sucks. Those people are losers. Who I got not, I got no shit to do today. I could, I could go get a job. I could go uh, become an upstanding member of society. I could give money to charity. I could make Thomas Wooden Railway videos. Instead, I'm gonna dr- instead I'm gonna dress up like a clown and go stand out in the field and scare teenagers who are going out to smoke weed in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's not nice of them. That's not a that's not a very that's not a very cool that's not a very cool situation to be nah. doing. Did that's- you ever? Did you ever have a side character that was a clown? I did not have a side character that was a clown. I considered having one, but I ultimately decided not to. 
because I couldn't reach an agreement with his manager. Uh. We booked him for appearances in the Mr. MPS 2002 review series. But Ooh. but he, there we had a we had like a like a fallout falling out over pay. Uh, he, he you know he he's I won't I'm not even legally allowed to say who he was, but he, he was like a high profile. He was a high profile clown, you know, and he was gonna come pop in and do some do some appearances, make some funny jokes, you know, maybe honk some horns or something like that uh-huh. in in my reviews and nothing, nothing. Do you give us a hint of who this guy was? Well. He did star in a very successful movie a couple years ago. Is it like Claw of the Law? Uh, and he loves to, uh, um, and he loves to laugh and make jokes. He loves to make jokes. I, I think it's the Claw of the Law. He guy. loves to make laugh and make jokes. And he has green hair. That's right. I'm talking about Mr. Bubbles. It's his in his new in uh, his, his new look. He dyes his hair green now because he wants to look like the Joker. That makes sense. That makes sense. Hey, you know, now that you're the interim ambassador to Sodor, maybe you can get a deal done. I think instead, I'm going to go talk to the president. And I'm going to have Mr. Bubbles thrown in jail. I'd like to be. Under the sea in an octopus.